Let's go and uh, do and do that. See us different setting at my dad's house right now in between picking up one of my girlfriend's daughters and checking out his mail and his house real quick. So, and I did notice that yesterday I saw that the video uploaded, but then it kind of didn't really, it kept saying it was still uploading. So then I deleted that separate file, even though it was already there. And of course it deleted both files. So I'm gonna do this real quick. I guess not, cause my dad's calling me. What's going on dudes and dudettes? Yes, as you can see, I have a different background than normal. I'm in between checking out my dad's house and his mail and then picking up my girlfriend's youngest daughter real quick from school. But yes, I thought I'd just get the video out of the way now because the video I uploaded yesterday, for some reason, kept saying it was uploading even though it was already done and people were able to view it. So I deleted that one that says it was still uploading. And then of course it deletes both. So luckily it was only a couple minutes, but of course one extra story did happen. I took away two other stories, so you guys are lucky. So sh this video shouldn't be that long. But yes, Jackson Dart, the next freshman quarterback coming in to USC, he's actually already there. He's an early enrollee. He was recently named the high school Gatorade player of the year out of all of uh, the United States, which is pretty awesome. I know <clears throat> USC had one other guy at the quarterback position there with that same award in JT Daniels, but of course he's in Georgia, but hopefully they can keep this guy around a lot longer. And yeah, it's great that they have a young, talented person like that on the team. Hopefully he gets his chance soon, after a year or two maybe, and we'll see what he can do. And then a little bit of crazy extra bit of USC football news that happened later in the day, that's why I'm able to put it in today, is that the defensive tackle, Jay Toya, he's a freshman guy that just came in like like Dart, but for some reason he has entered the transfer portal and I don't know what's really the thing. He is a SoCal guy. It's not like he wants to go back home across the country or anything like that. So I don't know what really happened. I know they've USC has been talking with a lot of defensive linemen recently and you know they might have to go into the transfer portal yet again to try to fill up that spot because there are there are guys there at that position but they are pretty young so they might need to get a little bit older veteran type of player in the transfer portal who will most likely become available because all these players get upset very quickly nowadays pretty crazy and then yes when it comes i'm just trying to remember uh, i think the video had mark easley i mentioned him in the last video that he signed with the 49ers but of course the that later in that day he got released or yeah he got released later that day so it's freaking crazy the ex usc wide receiver sucks for him and then of course when it comes to julio jones to the chargers the odds like betting odds in vegas and everywhere kind of went up high they're like the top two one of the top two teams to get him according to betting odds which is pretty crazy uh, i hope it does happen but tom telesco is a guy doesn't like to take chances especially on trades like that and It'll just be great for the team, but of course, I don't think he's going to pull the trigger and help out Justin Herbert as much as he can, which sucks. But yes, getting on to the Laker game. Uh, yes, they did win game two. It's great to get that victory on the road, take back home court advantage. Tonight, they do play game three in LA. It's the first time that freaking both LeBron and Anthony Davis have played a playoff game at the Stable Center, which is Crazy to think of, but obviously last year they're in the bubble. And so yeah, hopefully they get enough vaccinated fans in there to try to make it as much of a, a sellout as it can be, be as loud as it can be. Luckily, Chris Paul has been hindered with an injury that happened in game one and it definitely uh, showed up at the end of game two because he didn't play most of that fourth quarter. And during that stretch, I think that that's when the Lakers pretty much turned it up. Both AD and LeBron kind of came out, did their thing. Anthony Davis definitely stepped up his game as he normally does after a bad game. Had like 34 points, uh, 18 from 21 from the free throw line, so he was aggressive. Had a double double as well. You know, Schroeder, the point guard, had 20 plus points. Even Andre Drummond had a double double as well, 15 and 10, I believe. LeBron had over 20, so it was great to see. Those guys step up. Hopefully other guys step up. Pope had a bad night shooting, but hopefully everybody else steps up. 
<clears throat> Caruso, I'm talking about everybody. Horton Tucker, they're throwing you in there. Better step up, because tonight they cannot lose. They can maybe lose one of these games, but I don't want to see them lose tonight. They'll suck. Hopefully they can get these two victories in LA. And it's kind of weird how they've been making them play every other day. Every other team has had like at least one in between one game where they had two days off. And in this series, both teams have had to play every other day for some reason. I don't get that. They might probably want the Lakers to lose early. The NBA, which sucks, but whatever. Hopefully they win tonight. Sending all the luck to them. Thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.